What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Getting Technical, joined by Raleigh and Sam. What's going on, fellas? Um, been a long time since I've been on. Yeah. Been a minute. Yeah, nice of you to show up. <laughs> I fought, yo. Yeah. So why didn't plan on killing me, dog? <laughs> Just picked that when is the last time you were on? I think a month, right? Something like that. Probably, probably. like three or four apps, yeah. Jeez. Just picked out a wedding cake too. Got all that done. Now it's just paying for everything. You got a little, yeah. you got a little get it, getting technical logo on that cake, yeah? What? Got a little getting technical logo on that cake? I might yeah. have to. <laughs> <laughs> right, right when you cut in the middle, you see everything. You see the logo. It's <laughs> uh, funny. Um, last night, obviously, it was game seven. Boston versus Miami. Boston uh, fell apart. They, uh, you know, got blown out, obviously. Tatum rolls his ankle first play of the game. Jalen Brown turns the ball over eight times. They're blaming Joe Missoula. They don't, you know, I, I don't know. It just seems like I think you got to bring back Missoula for his first year with no training camp, no offseason time with the team. He gets him to a game seven of Eastern Conference Finals. I think you got to part ways with Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. It doesn't work. Um, this is year six with them, year five or six. And, uh, I mean, this has been their story, you know. And we talked about this last week, right, with yeah. Mikey on the app. You know, yeah. we talked about how – or maybe it was the episode before that. We just talked about how we don't think that that duo of Jalen Brown and Jason yeah. Tatum can really get it done. They, We've kind of seen their peak. They can potentially reach the finals. They're not really good enough to win the finals. Um, and especially when you look at that contract that Jalen Brown's going to get, as much as like he's a very capable offensive player, he's a little bit questionable defensively sometimes. The consistency is not really there. And then, you know, he, he outside of when he doesn't have the ball, he doesn't really move without the ball either. Yeah. So it's just kind of he's one of the – like he as much as he has all this talent, there are deficiencies to his game. And it just kind of feels like they have that guy in Tatum who's the ball-dominant guy, and they could potentially look for something else that would just make more sense. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even so, with the ball in his hands, I mean, Jalen Brown had, what, eight turnovers? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's rough. Like, to have eight turnovers in a closeout game, game seven on your home court, it's really – I agree. I don't think that they should bring him in. I don't think they should get rid of Joe Missoula either. Hmm. Like you said, I mean, first season, didn't really have much of a training camp, didn't have much time with the team, got to the Easter Conference Finals. I don't know if it's so much him or just the duo. Like, that's their peak. He's kind of at Easter Conference Finals – appearance um i think they also got to get rid of horford i think marcus smart wore out his welcome there i think he's kind of like a he's just kind of like a classic celtic but eventually you just have to like move on from those guys and kind of adapt to the way the league is because he's just not what you need from a guard in the nba these days yeah i think going back to the the joe missoula thing is i i also agree i think they should bring him back but it's just funny because, you know, they were down 3-0 and everyone's like, it's Missoula, it's Missoula, it's Missoula. When in reality, the players just weren't really playing well. And then they go and they win three games. And it's because Derek White's playing great. Marcus Smart is hitting shots. Tatum and Brown are starting to find a rhythm. And then game seven, Tatum hurts his ankle. He has 14 points. Jalen Brown shoots. He was shooting, you know, tour dates last night. <laughs> eight turnovers and then they lose like it's like the player the coaches can only get you so far at some point it just comes down to the players and they just didn't get it done enough and to put that all on Missoula it just it just doesn't really make sense yeah I think yeah I think I think it's just time it, it's time it's like just one of those things it's like it's it, I think it's overdue like like I like I think Dame's time in Portland is overdue like it's time to move on you know like some of these guys I they they're hurting themselves. I think Jalen Brown might he might flourish in another role in another team, another system. You know who knows? We we really haven't um, fully seen him by himself. You know we've obviously got flashes when Tatum was out or whatever, or when he's really taken over the game. But hey, maybe he is a, a number one guy and he can flourish in that role. I don't know. He's talented. He's talented enough. But um, we've seen flashes. He was yeah. great in the finals last year. Yeah, that's what I'm Tatum, saying. Yeah. But. So it's like I I think I think it would be cool to see him somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and then obviously you got to give credit to the Heat. Uh, Jimmy played his ass off last night, and then Caleb Martin was like, I mean, arguably the Eastern Finals MVP. Yeah, yeah, the Larry Bird Trophy winner. Yeah, yeah, which was tough. I mean, to hand the Larry Bird Trophy to different to a player on the Heat just beat in the, Boston in Boston <laughs> Game Seven. That's that's a tough L for Boston right there, but. 
Yeah, I I just think that Miami. I, I hear a lot of people talking like Miami. They're just tired of the success that they've had over the years. I mean, between this is what their seventh finals appearance since two thousand six. Um, is it? Yeah, because they had four in the Braun era, two yeah. with Jimmy, and then one with D Wade and Chad. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, they've had plenty of finals appearances. Spo's been amazing. I mean, obviously we know what Pat Riley is capable of doing. It's been with three completely different teams, and it's really impressive. But I could see why other people and the fans of teams in the Eastern Conference are kind of getting tired of it. But got to tip your cap to it. Yeah, I saw I saw a stat with Pat Riley, where as a player. Um, a coach and what is he the GM I think he's like the president president or executive yeah. something yeah. like that he's been in 24.7 percent of all finals in NBA history yeah that's <laughs> he's been a part of one that's pretty crazy he's been yeah. a, he's been a part of a quarter of every NBA finals that's pretty crazy stat like yeah you know people talk about Phil Jackson well like not well Phil Jackson was a failure after coaching well yeah but still that's what 11. Finals appearances? Yeah, I mean, th- when you have MJ, Pippen, Kobe, Shaq, I don't know. I don't know how much credit. Yeah, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking away from his coaching. I'm just saying, like, like on this, like, Mount Rushmore of, like, basketball people, it's like, like, Pat Riley has to be up there in some ways. Like, the guy's just a winner. Yeah. The yeah, guy's, like, an ultimate else. winner. Yeah, I don't know who else would be ahead of him. You would have to think back to, like, 60s, Red Hour back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nobody else that's had that kind of, like, domination over the league. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, then like college, like John Wooden, but Coach K. Yeah, Coach K. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy though. Pat Riley's in a in a bracket of his own right there. For sure. Um, but I mean, what it was, so? What are your guys' predictions for the finals? Obviously, it's Miami, Denver. Um, first two games will be in Denver. I don't know. I don't know if the Heat have enough firepower to, because uh, I think the Lakers have more firepower than the Heat, and it just showed like towards the end of games. Like, if you're not hitting shots, you're not going to beat the Nuggets. Like, you got to be hot, like, the whole game. Because, like, yeah. they just play. They, they, they wear you down. Because, like, every, it's just Jokic at the top of the key, and everyone's just playing off of him. It's nonstop movement. And then you got you just got a bunch of dogs with, like, Gordon, MPJ, Bruce Brown, KCP. And then, I mean, Jamal Murray is making a case for, like, a top five to top seven point guard in the league. If he wins the finals this year, I mean, I don't know how you couldn't put him in the top five. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it'll definitely be tough, I think, at least from Miami's standpoint. I mean, the Lakers were getting great contests on a lot of shots. That it seemed like everything would go in for the for the Nuggets, especially Jokic and Murray. It seemed like they couldn't miss. But for the standpoint for Miami, they got a lot of – they're a lot younger on the wings. They're a lot quicker on the wings. I think that they match up a little bit better, um, especially defensively. Like, you could throw a couple bodies at um, – at Jokic, I mean, I think Bam is kind of he's not a better defender than than AD, but he's also not reliant on the offensive end like how AD is. He could kind of focus defensively on right, right, right. focusing on Jokic, but if they can't get the one of the first two games at Denver, I don't think they have any shot in winning the series. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that based on like you know getting swept, obviously a terrible look, but I think that Lakers team is a lot better than we're giving them credit for since they got swept by Denver. And I think people are probably just underestimating how great Denver really is, especially offensively with Jokic and Murray playing at that level. They just have so many guys that can go get a bucket when you need, you know, Aaron Gordon can Michael Porter jr. We know what he can do. And then it's like, I I just don't think the heat can hang with them. Like if you think about it, like especially like the Knicks series, like with like the Knicks just couldn't really score, but like, the Heat really couldn't either, and it just was kind of like a slugfest. And this kind of became something similar in Boston, where especially last night, I mean, the Boston had 40 points at half. Like, yeah. It's kind of like they've been slowing down the games, and it's been working for them, but I don't think that they can really get enough stops to, to really have a chance against Denver. No, 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 no. I think it's going to be – I mean, it really comes down to um, – how much Jimmy has left in the tank and if he's just going to go like you know play off Jimmy Mo like the entire series that's the only way they have a chance I can't see them really what would De- Denver be who they beat in the first round Minnesota what was that 4-1 then they beat mm-hmm. the Suns what 
four zero. No, four one. It went four six. Oh, six four two, and yeah. then they beat the Lakers four zero. Yeah. So like it's like they, and then they did this, and then they did this all year long, and it's like this is not the same Nuggets team that we saw in the bubble. Yeah, you know, this is not the same Nuggets team that got bounced. Who they get bounced by last year? Um, was well, last year I don't even they got bounced by the Warriors, but I wouldn't even count it because they didn't have Jamal Murray yeah. or Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, so it's like. Wow. I think yeah, like I mean, I I I am a victim of it as well. Where like, I mean, bro, I wrote, kind of wrote them off. I was like, oh, like we yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're like the, they're like the regular yeah, season sure. team. Yeah. And then like when you actually watch them this playoffs, bro, they're fucking good. They're a really good team, bro. Like this is like this is like one of the closest things to uh, to like the Warriors almost like outside of like when they were with KD. But I'm saying last year's team, and then when they went on those runs before of just like ball movement they have like obviously the best player in the world on their team they're the robin jamal murray clay thompson was like playing at a fucking all world level six clay yeah you know like this is and then bro and then you had the you know the wings like, with mpj like bro this, harrison barnes was back yeah. then like it's it's a similar team obviously you, you swap Jokic and curry yeah. but bro this team is dominant like i don't see a team really competing with them in the league no. at all I think that another thing is like J- Jokic and Murray have such great chemistry together. Like they yeah. play off each other so well. Yeah, they're perfect. Especially because Jokic kind of loves coming up to the top of the the key and really doing those handoffs. Like that's like really what he does to get most of their plays started. I feel, and it just works so perfectly with Jamal. Yeah, like, kind of like comes off the. You know, he can come off from that. He can shoot the jumper. He can co- can make the pass. Like he can do so yeah, many he things. He gets downhill very well. Mm-hmm. And there's just like really the defense. You kind of have to just pick your poison and just hope for the best, really. Yeah. And then you got to kick it out to Michael Porter Jr. He's a knockdown shooter. You know. KCP yeah. knocking down threes. Bruce, Bruce Brown. Brown. Like, yeah, bro. This is just a good team. I think. I think and the they're heat, well coached. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah, I think I think it's four hour four one. Yeah. I, I I can't see that he getting two games. It's also a team that outside of their injuries, like they've that core has been together. They've been together for a while. They've played. They've had yep. success. And really, the only reason why they weren't in the mix the past few years was because of injuries. And now that everyone's there, they're kind of just showing, like, yes, like we are this good. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. I mean, my prediction. I'm gonna say I'll give the Heat one game. It's hard to. I don't know. No, fuck it. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna say the Nuggets sweep them 4-0. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm say gonna they win say the fourth game in Miami, and, Yo- and Jokic wins. Uh, Jokic wins Finals MVP. Yeah, I I got um. I'm going to go with the Nuggets in five. Um, I respect Spo too much. I would give them – I'm going to give them a game just from the fact that I think coming home to Miami for game three, Spo makes the adjustment, but then Mike Malone makes the other adjustment, wins game four, comes back game five, Jokic gets finals MVP. Yeah. yeah. And also, I don't know if you guys have been seeing the clips of the whole inf- incident with uh, – Markeith Morris, if you like, that was like what yeah. last year, the year before, and like the Heat guys in the locker room. But it's yeah, like, yeah. everyone's like, well, the Heat want their revenge. I'm like, bro, like, I feel like Jokic wants to send a message too. Yeah. Because he was the one who got cheap shot initially. Yeah. Like, everyone kind of forgot about that. But yeah. I don't know. I just think he's, I don't see how they can stop him. They really just don't have, like, unless Caleb Martin goes crazy again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, did, <laughs> did you guys see Dwight Howard, what he said? Oh, about how he would shut down. Jokic yeah, he said he whatever. had a better. He said he had a better prime than Jokic. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. <laughs> Did he win an MVP? No, oh. no. But I, I, <laughs> I was, I was uh, watching OG. I was watching him on his live, and he was talking about it, or maybe it was just a clip of his, and he was talking about how in Dwight's prime in a five-year stretch, he was like top five in MVP voting almost every year. Yeah, and that was. In the middle of winning three Defensive Player of the Year awards, came in second in MVP voting the year D uh, D Rose won it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bro, D- Dwight Howard was my favorite player. I was a fucking Magic fan when I was a kid. Like my PlayStation gamer tag was D H hash twelve. Yeah. Yeah, like he was my favorite player, bro. Like that, I love that team. Jameer Nelson, Rashard Lewis, Hito Turgaloo, Michael Petris, fucking uh, who they have coming off the bench. JJ ah. Redick. He might have started. He might have started at the two. Did he come Did off the he bench? Start? I don't know. But that Magic team, when they went on that run, like, you know, I love them. But, bro, for him to say that he has a – he had a better prime than Jokic while Jokic is in his prime after winning two out of the last three MVPs is, like, kind of absurd. And he's in the finals and is going to win finals MVP 
and get his first ring. <laughs> and he's going to do this for like the next, I'm not saying he's going to win the finals every year or MVP, but I'm saying he's going to do this for like another four or five, six. He could do this for another six or seven years if he stays remotely healthy because he's not relying on his athleticism. Yeah. So it's like, if he can just like keep the weight down and like stay like in like playing shape, I mean, bro, like this guy could do this like for the next six, seven, eight years. And then I think we can end up putting him in a category with Dirk. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I don't know if he'll – because I don't think he scores like Dirk. No, but he still can. It's kind of – it reminds me of kind of like LeBron because, like, everyone's like, well, LeBron really wasn't that great of a scorer, but he still managed to score 27 a game. Jokic is kind of the same way. He doesn't really look to score. He doesn't – and if he takes what's given to him. Right. But at the same time, like, he's still going to end up averaging 25, 26, 27 in, a night, and it's going to be close to a triple-double. Yeah. So – it's just kind of like, like LeBron got criticized often. He's like, oh, he doesn't have the scoring title. I was like, well, that's not really what he did. But then it's like, well, he was still amazing at it. But yeah. that wasn't there was he was a multifaceted player, mm -hmm, whereas yeah. opposed to some guys like a Kobe or an MJ outside of their defensive like prowess, like they were mainly scorers. They yeah. weren't necessarily these playmakers. Yeah. Yeah, I think another big part of it is like you said, staying healthy. I mean, LeBron was a winning scoring titles, but he was also playing. 75 to 82 games a season yeah and that's why his he's the all-time leading scorer at this yeah. point without with only having one scoring title in his career and he could have you know oh, what i'm saying he like easily could he could have he could have yes, yes, averaged sure. 35 like for a for with that cleveland to heat to back to cleveland he could average like 35 every every year yeah for like a like yeah, an eight eight year stretch yeah. if he really we wanted in the playoffs. to we saw it in yeah, the playoffs. yeah like, he was asking 35 yeah. 12 and 10 yeah. in the playoffs. They had we a know stat. He do that in the regular season. Yeah. Just, they had a stat the other day. Um, it was like the highest points per game in game seven. And I think, because they were talking about Tatum, I think he's at like 28. Maybe it's higher and I'm just wrong. He was like top five well, on the list. That, LeBron's that, at 35, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that 28 for Tatum is inflated because, because he had 50. Because <laughs> he had 14 well, last Well, now it's night. down because and, he had 14. And he's also only played what, like five or six game sevens? Yeah, LeBron's probably played in 30 game yeah. sevens, yeah. Crazy. Um, I mean, speaking of LeBron, we could wrap up basketball with that. We do want to do the ranking players. In oh, you're right. With the finals before yes. that. Yeah. But so. also LeBron was, it, you saw it came out that he had like, I knew he was playing hurt, but yeah. Yeah. Torn tendon tendon is, is, yeah. 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 Torn tendon. I mean, yeah, so that's what he does in the closeout game. He puts up 40, 40 point triple double basically with a torn ligament in his ankle. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. And people, and people were dogging him. It's crazy. People aren't going to appreciate it till he's gone. Yeah, no. Did you see that shit with uh, Austin Rivers, what he said in the bubble? Yeah, that all the players were kind of sitting uh, around waiting that to shit see was funny. if they wanted to play or not. And they were, everybody kind of looked at LeBron like, are you like, playing? Or? <laughs> but he said he was like, uh, what's his no name went up there? Bad, he right? was like, Pat oh, Bev yeah. went up there. <laughs> well, first he said Udonis Havlin went up there and was like, yo, big bro, what are we doing? And dropped the mic. Then he's like, Pat Beverly went up there and he's like, no one was fucking listening. <laughs> And then it basically was like, yo, LeBron, you playing or not? Because it's like, if you're not playing, we're not playing. Yeah. And I was like, that's pretty crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, I like Austin. Austin Rivers is mad, like, real on his yeah. uh, on his podcast. He's like, good, he doesn't sure. hold back. Yeah. Um, Which is surprising. I mean, I mean, not surprising at all, but you think of, like, even players like Udonis Haslam, who's respecting the league, Chris Paul, who's the Player Association president. Everybody still kind of turns their head and looks at LeBron. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty fucking crazy that it would have been crazy if they didn't play though. Well, you know what? But the thing that was like the joke going it was like they were like, "Yo, like LeBron sees he's got a real chance at this ring." And they're like, "He's playing." Oh yeah, he's playing. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, they were the number one seed in the West. Yeah, <laughs> there was yeah. no way that LeBron yeah, was saying, not, nah, I'm not playing. playing. Yeah, what? Like, yeah, the plus, eight plus seed got... doesn't want to play. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and on top of the fact that. They, they had what a week and a half, two weeks of rest before they started playing. Yeah. Again. So yeah, now yeah. he's already re-energized. He's like, yeah, I'm playing. Yeah. Fuck that. But um, now it doesn't count. Yeah, and, that's ridiculous, bro. Though. That's ridiculous. But th they were saying this year is like kind of like a lot of the bubble teams are really in that final four. Yeah, they were. Nuggets yeah, they were. were in the the Nuggets were in the West Finals, right? They yeah. played the Lakers in the West yeah. Finals and, and the, the Heat the and Celtics the Celtics. Celtics. Yeah, it was the exact yeah. same four. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I don't know. The whole that whole bubble thing was weird. People. Were like, it obviously yeah. counts, bro. They're playing fucking basketball. Yeah, because it's like, bro, it, like the home teams were at a disadvantage. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like the home teams were at a disadvantage. And the that, Lakers would have had home court advantage throughout the yeah. entire playoffs. That that makes it almost harder. Yeah, you know, to like, and you're just trapped in the bubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Like, 
yeah, you, there, there's two ways you could look at it. You could be like, oh, like it was there. There was no fans. Like that's really the only knock. But everything else, it was like, yo, you're secluded in a fucking hotel. You can't leave. You're you can't really see your family. Uh, you're you know, on ball, you're focused on basketball all the time, and there is no fans. Basketball is part of fans. Like the the game gets rowdy, the game yeah. gets loud, the fans get involved when you go on a run. Yeah, you don't have that. So like, you really got the whole game. You got to like build momentum as a team. So I I give that. That's a fucking. That's a ring, bro. Yeah, for sure. Fuck that. Hundred percent. If anything, it's one of the harder rings. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, <laughs> he said it's like the hardest ring he's won. Well, outside of I guess the three one comeback. Yeah. yeah. Should we do our top 10 players in the finals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start it up. All right, I'll start. Um, I'm going to go 10, start at the bottom. Yep. Yeah. So my top 10 players in the NBA finals, I got at 10, I got Kyle Lowry, 9, Gabe Vincent, 8, Bruce Brown, 7, Aaron Gordon, 6, Caleb Martin, 5, MPJ, 4, Bam, 3, Jamal Murray, 2, Jimmy Butler, and then I got Jokic at 1. Mm. Well, mine's Pretty similar. Certainly don't have Kyle Lowry in there. Yeah, the Kyle Lowry thing, I, I just figured since he's been there, I feel like he could be a t- top 10 player and, like, effective because he's been there. The moment's right. not going to be too big for him. Yeah. And out, he sucked the last series, but he was fucking fantastic against the Knicks. Yeah, he was. He killed them. Yeah. Um, at 10, I got KCP. 9, Gabe Vincent. 8, Bruce Brown. 7, Aaron Gordon. 6, MPJ. 5, Caleb Martin. 4, Bam. Three Jamal Murray, two Jimmy Butler, and one Jokic. So, yeah, pretty gotcha. similar. Just a uh, couple swaps. <laughs> uh, for me, I got ten KCP, nine Aaron Gordon, eight Kyle Lowry, seven Gabe Vincent, six Martin, five Porter Jr., four Bam, three Murray, Butler, Jokic to round it out at yeah. one. Four through one was the same for all. Yeah, those. yeah, of course. No Aaron Gordon. I didn't have Gordon. He was nine. Yeah. Oh, was he? Like KCP, yeah, yeah. then Gordon, then Lowry. Mm. I didn't have. Yeah, Bruce, I, I, I didn't have Bruce Brown. I didn't oh, have. Uh, I love Bruce. I think Bruce Brown. Yeah, I think Bruce Brown too. I, I, I think. I like I was, KCP I was, a lot too. I was, it was exactly, hard was for me to leave him off. and KCP. It was hard for me to leave him off. There's yeah. a lot of cool like players in this series. Yeah. I don't know why some people are like yo, this is gonna be like the most boring finals. Like, bro, like, what are you talking about? Yeah, no, I just. I think even though if I think like I think. The Nuggets will win in five. I do think the games will be fun. Yeah, the Lakers yeah. games were good, too. It was yeah. a sweep. That was a great series. It yeah. was just a fucking sweep. Which is yeah. why, like, I, I think the Lakers are better than a lot of people. Like, oh, they got swept. It's like, bro, like... And and Windhorse, I think, said it. He was like, that was, like, the most impressive sweep I've ever seen. People were people like, bro, were you're dick riding the yeah. Lakers. But he's not really wrong. Like, every was game was close, and yeah. it was like, the Nuggets were just better. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, you guys want to dive into some... Yeah, I mean... I mean, we LeBron. could really, I mean, we wrap it up. What we were going to do it with LeBron, like whether you're not, you think he's going to retire or not. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think he's retired. I don't think he's going to retire. There's no way he goes out like that, you know, as an elite competitor to go out on a sweep. Um, and I injured. Th- think yeah, I think, I think there's some shit going on behind the scenes where, like, I think they're going to land fucking Kyrie. And uh, I think they go on a crazy run next year. Kyrie, AD, and, uh, and Braun and win it. And then, they, and that's then, possible. How do they yeah. get Kyrie though? If they're, what are they giving up? Bro, it's LeBron, bro. He'll make it fucking happen. You know, like, <laughs> he's gonna be like, hey, Kyrie signs for like the minimum, and no, LeBron's I, gonna give him like an outside sponsor deal. With, like, I'm uh, saying, bro, you're not like, Spring Hill Entertainment. They're gonna do a movie, bro. If, I'm, if I have Kyrie, AD, and Bron, bro, I don't need Hachimura. I don't need Austin Reeves, and I certainly don't need fucking D'Lo. Well, D'Lo's gone. Yeah, well, D-Lo's that's what I'm saying. That's a lot gone. of money right there. Yeah, but isn't it the but they're the, isn't their payroll up there? It's like they can re-sign these guys because they have like their rights, but they'd go into the luxury and get penalized. Probably, I, but I, I think I there's there's always ways around it. Um, maybe Ky- a sign and trade. Maybe they do like send Reeves and Hachimura to Dallas. They do a sign and trade, and that wouldn't be bad for Dallas with like no, like I think Luka. Reeves would really be a nice piece yeah. outside of him. I think it would make more sense. I, as much as their offensive talent with Kyrie and Luca, the 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 liability on defense is almost too much for them to overcome. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, you it can't. It didn't that. really work unless they had outside defenders, which they didn't because they traded Dorian Finney-Smith, who was their best defender, to get Kyrie. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's possible that he does the surgery, foregoes this year, goes into free agency, and just waits to see where Bronny gets drafted? Wait, that surgery would be season-ending. I mean, it depends how long he waits to get the surgery. 
I mean, he could he could say, oh, I'm going to rehab for the entire summer, then decide to get the surgery in September. The season starts in October. It's a five-month rehab process. I, He's not back till March. is not going one and done. I actually saw something. Uh, if a team knows that they're going to be able to get LeBron in free agency, they'll draft at him. At 40 years old? No, but here's the thing. I actually saw. I mean, you're saying at 40 years old, but he just we just said how he had a 40-point triple-double, and he had a... He had a torn ligament in his ankle. Who cares if he's 40 years old or 24 years old? He's still putting up a 40-point triple-double in an elimination game in the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, but we're talking, like, super hypotheticals that Bron— Like, bro, like, Bron— Like, I don't care how— If LeBron, you're going to get LeBron or not, bro. It's like you're not going to waste a first-round pick on Bronny if he's not a fucking first-round pick. Like, he has to be even— He has to be remotely close to a first-round pick. Coming out of the Pac-12, so out of the Pac-12, like he better be averaging like 15 and eight minimum, and USC has to go to the tournament for me to even consider drafting Bronny. If Bronny's a subpar freshman, not even all freshman Pac-12, you're drafting him in the first round just to get LeBron for one year. Now you just ruined your draft, and you're gonna have to pay fucking well, who says sixty for- million dollars for LeBron? Well, who said I, it's for one year. I saw that LeBron. Bro, how 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 long is he gonna play? But this is like dead. Like rumors I'm came out that it's whole, the whole thing is dead. Like he, LeBron was like, I don't want to do that if he, we have different dreams. And it, so basically, I'm pretty sure it came out like Bronny does not want that to play with him. I, I don't think that Bronny does. That's like I saw a, a news article that kind of like hinted at that where LeBron kind of had a changed tone where he wasn't pushing it as much as he was. And it was like, well, if that's not something he wants, like basically like that's not like what I'm, I'm not going to force that upon him. And it, I, I feel like it makes sense because the yeah. amount of pressure that would come on him if he a team reaches on him to draft him to get LeBron. And then immediately, if you have LeBron, you're a title contending team and all eyes are on you. So when anything Bronny does, if he sucks or anything, it it's 10x the criticism. No matter what, though, yeah, he's, he's going to he's going to get that him. regardless. Yeah, I was just gonna he's going to get that regardless. He doesn't even need to go to the NBA right away because he's going to have so much NIL money. Like, yeah, I don't think bro. I don't The money I, isn't the thing. The point is, is him playing. I mean, the, he's loaded off of his father alone. Yeah, obviously, but, he wants to make a name for himself, but money's not the issue. Well, obviously, on either but side, he's not going to be ready. If money's not the issue, then I don't think he needs to rush trying to get to the NBA either. I think he should develop. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's he's not a one and done guy. If if his name was Mike Jones and he had the same exact skill set and played at Sierra Canyon, he would not have this much hype. He would not have been a McDonald's All American. I'm just saying, like, he's a good basketball player. Don't get me wrong, but like, everything is inflated because of his name and and who his father is. Um, I just don't think like there's a reason he went to the Pac-12. You know, there's there's a reason he didn't go to the ACC, SEC, or Big Ten. You think the SEC is that good in basketball now? I yeah. guess because really, bro, Bama, Bama LSU, had, has had like one good year. They bro, Bama's really been good been the last three years. Yeah, but and they're and they're a power. They're, bro, they're getting they're getting recruits. Bama's, I know they are now, but like this is kind of like to me at least this was the first year they had the Colin bro, Sexton team. Like they Bama had, had eh, LSU, Auburn, Kentucky, Tennessee, Tennessee, Kentucky, yeah. I feel like over the past Miss, 10 years, Mississippi State. I feel like over the past 10 years, the only team that's really been dominant from the SEC has been Kentucky. Well, LSU's State, been pretty Florida fucking State's, good, too. Florida State's, Florida State's ACC. Oh, right. Florida's in the Florida SEC. Florida's SEC, right. Florida, Florida went on a run recently, no? A couple so. years ago? I don't um, think so. I, I, I the, SEC like the ACC is, is really, like, that's the conference that's kind of dominated college basketball. Yeah, uh, for sure. Between Duke, North Carolina, Syracuse, Florida State. Syracuse is... Uh, Big East. No, wait. What is... Syracuse might be ACC. Yeah, they're yeah. ACC. They play Duke every single season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I'm trying to think. Uh, and then, like, Big East teams, like Nova, like, the, the teams that have yeah, been down... Yeah. Michigan uh, State's Big Ten, right? Ohio yeah, St- Big... Ohio State's Big Ten. Yeah. Big Ten. But that's what Michigan, I'm saying. Like, I think State. the SEC might be up and coming, but I feel like outside of Kentucky, like, they've kind I of think been, they're yeah. certainly better than the, the Pac-12. Tw- well, Oh one. yeah, yeah. Pac- no, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. He's going to SC. Like, but I could, a- I'm saying like I could see him on an SEC team. Yeah, sure. What about, I'm the, su- what about the Big Twelve? Who's there? Texas, Texas Oklahoma. Tech, TCU, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Oh, South we forgot team. about Virginia and the ACC. ACC. Yeah, yeah. the ACC is fucking insane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah v- no. VTech that's the also, best V-Tech conference in college basketball. Florida State's ACC. Yeah, yeah they've got to be Miami. State. Yeah, Miami. The, you think they're the best conference? The best ACC is the best conference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I still like the Big East, even Where's though they've kind of been Kansas asses. Big 12. Big 12. Yeah, Big 12 is great, too, bro. Yeah, Big, Big 12, 12 is, is big boy basketball. You, uh, Baylor. 
Oh, <laughs> Baylor, oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got Baylor, Kansas, Texas, Texas Tech, TCU. Yeah, that's in stack. Kentucky's SEC. I'm thinking Conference. of just Blue Bloods is... I think we named them And then UCLA there. is Pac-12. Have you guys yeah. seen... Uh, Patino's been getting some nice Oregon. recruits for... Pac-12. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Another Pac-12 team yeah. that's been really good. Yeah. yeah, but they never fucking do anything. Oh, it's still... They're, they're, they're all those teams, all like, they're good long. during the regular season, but then they oh, all get waxed in honest, the tournament. The same thing in football, too. For yeah. Pac-12? Yeah, for the Pac-12, Well, yeah. the, the SEC dominates fucking Well, football. yeah, but I'm just saying, in general, like, you'll see, like... Like Marcus Mariota has sick year at uh, Oregon. At Oregon, Oregon. Yeah. they get shit on. Yeah, Same Utah. Thing. Utah's good Utah, every year. Uh, yeah. S, uh, the Trojans get fucking dicked every single year after they win the Pac-12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Um, all right, so we're going football. Um, obviously it's it's June. Um, I think football. I mean, football season will be here before we know it. Oh two, yeah, two and a half, three months, and. Uh, I think we what what we want to start with our uh, our teams right going into yes. the year so some like early like super early you predictions. Want do, you want all do our AFCs and then all do our NFCs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Break it up. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, yeah, I can you start. can start with the NFC. NFC, okay. All right, yeah. So my uh, division winners and wild cards for the NFC. In the NFC East, I'm going to take the Eagles. NFC West, 49ers. NFC North, I'm gonna go with the Lions. And in the NFC South, <laughs> this is like a, this is a weird one for me. Uh, I guess I'll go Saints. I don't know. I don't feel confident really about any team in that division. Um, and then my wild card teams, I'll go with the Vikings, the Seahawks, and the Cowboys. So yeah, it's I. I I'm kind of torn because I do like the Giants and Commanders. I think they're both solid teams. I just don't. Uh, I, I it would be hard for me to to not put the Vikings in there. Yeah. Just be also because like I the Bears I don't think will be very good again. The Packers I don't think will be that yeah. good. So they kind of have some they get some weaker opponents. Whereas in the NFC East that that division is just stacked. Right. <laughs> yeah, in the NFC NFC East I have the Eagles. NFC West, I have the 49ers. NFC North, I have the Vikings. And the NFC South, I have the Bucks. Um, and then my wild card teams is the Cowboys, the Lions, and the Giants. Yeah, you're high on the Bucks still. I like Baker. Yeah, yeah, I like Baker. Like Baker I right? like Baker and bro. I, I I think Baker played played well last year with uh with LA. He showed flashes that he still can play. Right. Um I, I know that offensive line is not great, but I think with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage, Cameron Brait, you still got Lenny. You still got no, uh, Lenny's a free agent. Oh, Lenny's gone. Well, you got Rashad White. Yeah. Rashad White. And Rashad White's on. pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, and then hey, like their defense is it's eh, you know, but that's yeah. a weak division. Uh, I think like you're playing division. a lot of winnable division games. Is not you know? very good. You yeah. could win six. You could win five, six games just in your division alone. So. I mean, yeah. Okay. All right, what do you got, Sam? Uh, I got the Eagles taking the first seed, then the Niners in the west, Lions in the north, Saints in the south. Uh, I got the Cowboys being the number one wild card team, Seahawks as the number two wild card team, and I flip-flopped before we recorded. Originally I had the Vikings, but I switched it over to the Giants taking the last wild card Yeah, team. I think that's kind of a toss-up for me between those. Two. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I was originally thinking that, like, the Vikings, obviously losing Dalvin Cook, losing Adam Thielen. The defense is just continuously getting older. Kirk Cousins just might not be that guy. But they did draft Jordan Addison, who is arguably the top wide receiver coming out of the draft this year. Yeah. I mean, that's a sick wide He's receiver tough. course, so it really doesn't matter who's that QB. But I think last year they just kind of fucking hit their ceiling. And yeah. now Madison has to be that number one guy, I think, and I might, I don't he might not the, be it. Yeah, I don't think the Dalvin Cook losing him is going to be as big of a deal. Where, where did opinion. he did he land anywhere? Nah, he's a free agent. I don't stuff. think so. No, yeah, no I, I like Madison. I think he's good. I mean, we I don't know how he'll too. be as a lead yeah, back. That, that's the thing. But that's the thing. Yeah, I think that that offense just will be carried by like uh, it's just Justin Jefferson, bro. It's yeah. hard to go against him. And they still got T.J. Hawkinson. Yeah, yeah, he was a beast for them. Actually, last year. Yeah. I forgot about that. Um. Yes, my top teams in the AFC. So in the AFC East, I'm going to go with the Bills winning that division. AFC West, Chiefs. 
AFC North, Bengals, AFC South, Jaguars. My wild card teams are the Jets, the Chargers, and the Ravens. I feel like most people probably. Are you Probably putting them in order? order? Like first seed to Nah. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I was surprised you had the Bills over. No, I'm just going. I'm just running through it. Gotcha. I'm just running through yeah. it. Yeah. Um AFC East, I had the Bills, AFC North, the Bengals, AFC South, the Jaguars, AFC West, the Chiefs, and then my wild card team, same as yours, Chargers, Jets, and Ravens. So I have the same exact playoff uh, <laughs> picture, yeah. Yeah, I think I do too, except I got uh got the Chiefs in the West. Cincy up north, got the Jets winning the division, Jags winning the south, Bills is the number one wild card team, Chargers number two, and I have Miami taking the last wild card spot over the Ravens. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the reason for that, I mean, it's it's, it's it hard all, to go against the Ravens. Yeah, it's it's all just predicated on Tua being able to stay on the field because when they were on the field, he was top five quarterback. They got a top five wide receiving core. Um. Now Jalen Ramsey joins the defense with Xavier yeah, Howard. Yeah. I mean, they Bradley, was sketchy Bradley last Chubb is year there. Jalen Ramsey though. Yeah, but even in the year before in the Super Bowl, he kind of got picked apart. Yeah, he got yeah, killed. But now he doesn't He's need to be that number talent. one guy. Yeah. He doesn't have to guard that's the best fine. player that's every time. Fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, should we dive into? I mean, the receivers, right? Yeah. Maybe yeah, wide receiver rankings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So give our. Yeah, you can start. Uh, I guess thoughts. I could start it off. Yeah. So my top ten NFL receivers going into the 2023 season. I have Amon Ross St. Brown at 10, Scary Terry at 9, Diggs at 8, A.J. Brown at 7, C.D. Lamb at 6, Cooper Cup 5, Jamar Chase 4, Tyree Kill 3, Devontae Adams 2, and Justin Jefferson at 1. Mm. Yeah, my uh, my top 10 receivers, 2023. Number 10, I have C.D. Lamb. Number 9, I have Mike Evans. Number 8, I have Amon Ross St. Brown. Number seven, I have A.J. Brown. Number six, Cooper Cup. Number five, Stephon Diggs. Number four, Devontae Adams. Number three, Tyreek Hill. Number two, Jamar Chase. And number one, Justin Jefferson. Do you think that, before you go, Sam, do you think that Devontae Adams, is that Jimmy G shit true? Yeah. yeah, They might void his his contract? Yeah, he failed his physical. If they they have to void his contract, do they just trade Devontae Adams? What's the point? Like, they could get great value for him right now. Probably, right? Yeah. I mean, he's still... If, yeah, if he's got the pick. right receiver... If he's got, like... If the Jets, I mean, wanted to go pair him up with a- Rodgers again, I mean... That would be crazy. Yeah, that would be fucking... Like, that they would, would be... have to give away... I mean, then the, Jet, the Jets would... Ha- if they did that, they would obviously be giving a shit ton of their future picks up, whatever they have left. And they would have to fucking... They would have to win the Super Bowl this year. Because Rodgers is old. You know what I'm saying? Like you got you probably had like a two year window left I mean, of bro, like if you Rogers give, if you give Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, Garrett Will Garrett Wilson. I mean, would you guys do Brees that Hall? as as Jets fans? Would you would you take a Super Bowl in these next two years and then possibly like I have to look for What's a new the, quarterback. What do we think the price? Well, we're gonna have, look for a new quarterback. What do we think the price of Devontae and, Adams and, and, is? and maybe go through that shit for the next six, seven, eight years? Yeah, I think the the tough situation with that is is like like you said what's the price that you have to pay it's really tough to decide because i mean arizona was trying to get a second round pick for d hop yeah but that they're not they're they're not the same right now either what do you mean Devontae adams is like d hop was dealing with a lot of injuries like when 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 that stuff was going on and like don't get me wrong he was still good he had the pd well yeah the p yeah but i'm saying he had shit going on football like when you have shit going on bro like your stock drops like Devontae is at the top of the top of this game Right, I mean, I don't think D Hop is at. The, I don't think D Hop is far off of his prime. I mean, I just think that he was just in a shitty situation. I mean, he he even said he's like, I'm playing for a team that has a quarterback that doesn't love the game. Um, I'm part of a shitty organization, and he's just he was just in a bad spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get it, but I'm saying so as a Jets fan, like say say you had to give up, you know, you know, three first round future picks. No. No, I don't think the no. I don't think it would cost. It, that it much. would not. It, no, it wouldn't cost that. Probably a first and like third and like a fifth. Like it would be ran. It would be a <sighs> little mix. I don't think it would be because bro, first in the NFL. Like that's the funny thing is like the NBA bro, the first round pick, take them, take them, take them, take them. No, no, no. I know. NFL first like they're like is, those yeah, first round I, picks. I they do not give them shits up easy. <laughs> well, on top of the fact that they just traded the first round pick away to get Aaron Rodgers. 
I don't think that Devontae is going to go for that strictly because of how much money he's going to cost. I mean, the, I would give next year. They, first. they would. I would give the another for like I would. I would trade another first for Devonta. It would probably because they would also have to create cap space, so they'd probably be adding Corey Davis onto the deal. So now they got to add another pick in as a kicker because they're trying to swap contracts. They still got to figure out of how they're going to pay Quinn and Williams. I think that they got to focus on that before going out to trade to Devonta Adams. Because Quinn is arguably the best D tackle in football. They don't need a wide receiver right now. We've seen what Aaron Rodgers can do without Devontae Adams. He doesn't need him. We have Garrett Wilson. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Before before you do your top ten, do we think, and we want to talk about this, where do we think DeAndre Hopkins land? Because I saw I saw Theo Ash on TikTok. I don't know if you guys yeah, have I know seen Theo, his videos. Yeah. He, said that he, th- he said he doesn't think it will happen, but he said that he believes the best landing spot is the Jets for D-Hop. Yeah, I saw that. I don't think it will happen either. I think it would be nice. I, I but, think the only possibility of that is is if he takes like a seven million dollar contract because when he got released by the Cardinals, they still have to pay out twenty two million dollars to him. Now how they break that up over the course of the years is up in the air. But yeah. if he's willing to take a, a pretty cheap contract to play for a Super Bowl contending team, even though he's come out and said that he has no interest in playing for the Jets. He said that? Not directly. I mean, they've asked him who's a quarterback that you haven't caught a pass from that you would want to. He didn't name Aaron Rodgers. Who are the top five teams you want to go to? Didn't name the Jets. What teams did he name? He named the Bills. He named, um, I think he named Cleveland. Not Cleveland. Cleveland. Um, no, no, no. He named because they they asked him the quarterbacks. And they he, they were like, who are the top five quarterbacks? Like, who is your top five? Whatever. He said Josh Allen, Mahomes, Herbert. Uh, Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts. Yeah, and when he said, you know, it was funny when he said Herbert. He was like, oh, that boy down in um, San, San Diego. Diego. That was fucked. <laughs> I brought that up to Obi, and he was like, we get no fucking respect over here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. We got to have him on shit. soon as football season approaches. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, it just doesn't seem like he really wants to He really wants to come to New York for whatever reason. I mean. Well, maybe Aaron Rodgers kind of fits that. He wants a quarterback that loves the game, and half the time we don't even know if Aaron Rodgers wants to keep playing football. Although now it looks like he does yeah, on I the mean, Jets. Yeah, I mean, he blatantly came out and said, and you saw that new, um, I think he was at the Indy 500 during the celebration. He, there was, like, confetti coming down. He took a video of himself with two other people, and he was like, the, he yelled out. He was like, the Jets win the Super Bowl. And then and he, he, he watched the uh, he watched the 1986 uh Amazing Mets documentary yep. yeah, um, watched to, the, to see the New York yep, uh, Once Upon a Time in Queens. Yeah, yeah like you what saw, what it what it means to win in New York. He just had uh, the Taylor Swift concert with Miles Teller the other night, singing all the lyrics. Was he? Yeah, <laughs> Mad Life. I mean, he's, he's having just, he's having a good off season, man. Yeah, man. I mean, he's in a good headspace. I think the most important thing for the Jets is signing Quinnen. Absolutely. Before, before without him, I consider mean, consider Devonta. Yeah. yeah. Um. But, so uh, my my rankings, yeah. I got a. Uh, Number 10, I put Garrett Wilson. Number 9, D-Hop. 8, C.D. Lamb. 7, Cooper Cup. 6, Stefan Diggs. Devontae Adams at 5. And this is strictly because the whole situation with Jimmy mm-hmm. G. I just think his numbers drop. Um, A.J. Brown at 4. Tyreek Hill at 3. Jamar. And then Justin Jefferson at 1. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. I think... Um, I don't know. Still, his numbers. Like, even without Jimmy G, like... We don't know who who it's going to be, but he'll still have over 1,100 yards and six TDs. I mean, he's had 1,500 the last, what, five seasons? Yeah, and I, but that's with Derek Carr and A-Rod. Yeah. A-Rod, yeah. I mean, I, I think he's I, – as much as – as great as Justin Jefferson is, I think if we're just talking pure talent, I feel like Devontae Adams still has to be the best receiver in football. Yeah, him and Jay Jeff. I yeah, think are, are, I think one and two. Yeah, like one A, one B. Far yeah. from the rest. But I just think yeah. I Chase think playing well, with really. Chase Tyree playing. Kill, yeah. Tyreek Hill is he's on a level. He's on like his own thing though. Like yeah, you know, he, what I'm saying he's he just he's the thing. sickest athlete ever. Yeah. Did you see um, the uh, DK Metcalf and Tyreek Hill want to like race or something? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think Tyreek's too fast for him. Bro, DK's ran a he yeah, ran D- a sub 11 100 meter dash. Yeah, but that that's top speed. But that's what they'd be racing. Oh, then maybe. Right? Wouldn't they? I, I didn't know if it was like a 40 yard dash or something. No, I think it, I it think was they 100 would run meters. A, I think they would run track. I think they both run track in, in high school and college. It would be close. They would run on the track. Yeah. DK's, bro, sub 11 is fast. Yeah, no, no. no. Of, Once DK people, hits top uh, speed, he's fast as fuck. A lot of wide receivers do that. I mean, outside of Hill and DK, I mean, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle. I mean, they all run. As a dog, yeah. Wild, wild 40 times. Yeah. Should we uh, do our top five receiving cores? 
Is yeah. it corpse or cores? Core. Core. It's See, spelled corp like corp is like. I know why are they. It's, a, why it's do they like spell a, that. A th- I mean, it's obviously mil- they use it in the military. I think it's a. I don't know what language it is. I think it's French. Mm. But yeah. it's like how colonel like you sell. Look at how it's spelled. Colonel. Right, 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 right. right. Pronounced Weird. colonel. All right, I'll, do, I'll start. Uh, so my top five receiving cores in the twenty twenty going into the twenty twenty three NFL season. I have the 49ers at five with Debo, Ayuk, and Kittle. Seahawks at four, DK Lockett and JSN. I have the Bengals at three with Jamar and T. Higgins. Eagles at two with AJ and Devonta. And then I have Miami one with Waddle and Hill. Mm. Which I know the Bengals are probably the top for most people, but I I, I really like Jalen Waddle. Yeah, I think he's. I think last year his breakout season would have been better if t- if you know Tua didn't have those injury struggles. Um, I think just Tyree Kill, bro. He's just yeah, he's insane. Um, my top five receiving cores uh, at five I actually have the Jags with Zay Jones and Christian Kirk. Um, and I th- Calvin Ridley. Yeah, and Calvin Ridley. Yeah, the, the, like I think them, especially with T Law, is going to be crazy this year. Um, four, I have the Forty ers Three, I have the Dolphins. Two, I have the Eagles, and then one, I have the uh, the Bengals. Yeah. So, uh, number five. For me, I had the Chargers. Obviously, you still got Mike Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, but they just drafted Quentin Johnson, the kid out of TCU. He's going to be a stud. Uh, four, I got the Seahawks with Lockett, Metcalf, and JSN. Three with the Dolphins, two Eagles, and number one, Cincy. Yeah. Right. And then um, I think the Seahawks can be if, – if Geno can replicate at all what he did last year, bro, that receiving core, and then you have – The entire th- offense. Yeah, Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker, dog, and then you got DK Lockett and JSN. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the defense is just getting better. I mean, they had Bobby, Jamal Bobby Wagner's back. Yeah, about well, outside of Bobby Wagner, the um, Jamal Adams is back. Or Jamal Adams back is injury. back. Tariq Woolen, another year under his belt. And they're the, a solid team. They're they, dra- solid. they just drafted another corner too. The one of the top corners in the draft. I yeah. forgot his name. But yeah, they're gonna be a stud. They're gonna be a stud of a team. Yeah. Um. What else do we have? Oh, did we, we we have like our top three landing spots? I know we touched on it with D Hop. Oh yeah. But um yeah, I mean my, my top three is the Bills, the Chiefs, and the Ravens. Um I think in that order? Yeah. I think I think um I think D Hop really uh respects Josh Allen and would love to go and play there. Um obviously everyone every receiver would love to play for Mahomes. He mentioned that as well. And then the Ravens, he was uh, he talked about how Lamar didn't doesn't get enough credit, and he was like, yeah. uh, you know, shout out to Lamar down in Baltimore. So I could see them. That would be crazy with Lamar, J.K. Dobbins, Odell, and D. Hop. It's Mark like Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews. That's like right there. That's a fucking crazy offense. If everyone Bateman stays, coming back, that yeah, would be, exactly. That would be, nuts. That'd be crazy yeah. with that that team. Yeah, I got a. I think the number one spot for him should be should be KC. Out of all teams, but yeah. then I got the Ravens at number two and the Bills at number three. I yeah. just think that Josh Allen. I mean, we just don't know if he's going to be the same quarterback with no Brian Dable. I mean, he's just he has the most fourth quarter turnovers out of any quarterback since he's entered the league. Yeah, and I mean, if D Hop just wants to look at a quarterback who is going to consistently get in the ball, I, I would probably put Lamar and Mahomes over Josh Allen at this point. Yeah, I would probably the same as you guys. I would put the Chiefs at one. I would put the Ravens at two, and then I would put the Bills at three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good up. I feel like yeah, no, yeah. A lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm excited for the uh, for more NFL offseason shit yeah. too. Are you watching? I mean, you you're probably not watching it, but um, Flight Twenty Three. The on the, the, the Jets. Uh, yeah, the New York Jets like offseason thing, which is why I kind of want them to do hard knocks that. just so they get. Just so they get some national media attention, but watching it, they're like forty-five minute episodes. It's phenomenal, like TV, and just like following how everything, like how the process goes behind the scenes. I mean, you see how the process went with last year's draft, and then you see them go back and do this year's draft. You see them kind of break down how they consider every player, and you see what happens. Like you remember how during the draft they said, "Oh, Jets had their pants down, Bill Belichick." Fucked him over when he traded back with the Steelers yeah, so they yeah, could yeah. get um, Roderick Jones. Mm-hmm. If you look before the draft even starts or before they're even on the clock, the Steelers, 
you see Joe D going, I think this guy's going to go here, this guy's going to go here, and then Broderick Jones will go 14 right before us. And he was like, he was like, a team could even trade up. And he was like, probably Pittsburgh. And he, he fucking called every single thing happen. And like, that's just, like, we talk about Pat Riley, who's just kind of like a savant of knowing every single thing that's going to happen. He's one step ahead of everybody. I mean, you just see in that one episode what JD is able to do. Yeah, he's good. Which is why I haven't, I always say, I was like, I have full faith in JD. Whatever he decides to do with this team, I'm cool with. Which is why I'm not worried about Quinnen. Yeah, he'll figure it out. All right, good yeah. stuff. Good up.